experience with soft plastic, probably what some of us saying inside of the shop today. Nobody's probably spent more time than Rhode Island surf uh, over the last uh, 50 years than this guy. So it's a nice, uh, nice to have him here to share what he knows. Well, thank you Thanks, very buddy. much. I, I appreciate it. It's nice to be here. You know, some of you guys and and then know more of you after the after the talk. But um, it's I was just talking to someone about it's amazing. It's been 20 years since I've been using the Sluggo. And um, I have to thank two of my fellow fishing buddies, uh, Pat Abate and Tim Coleman, RIP. Uh, many of you know Tim or know of him, and Pat had a shop down in Connecticut. But <clears throat> 20 years ago, approximately 2003, um, I was a live eel fisher. Uh, I basically fished live eels for 30 years because back in 73, when I first started out, an old timer took me aside and said, hey kid, you want to catch fish, use a live eel. He didn't say it like that, but I'm cleaning it up a little bit. There's <laughs> a young man here. But, uh, <clears throat> so I fished basically live eels from 73 to 2003, either live or rigged. I did fish rigged eels. You know, I drifted <laughs> back and forth, and I tried, you know, I tried plugs, I used plugs, I used puff nails. You know, I, I kind of did it all, but after dark, uh, I, I definitely gravitated towards the live eel or the rig eel because in my book, it was the best way to catch striped bass. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, I know about the bunker, you know, chunk bunker, or a whole bunker, whatever. That works well, too. Yeah, go take that. That works well, too. But, you know, it's, chunking was not my thing. It's just, it just didn't seem like something I wanted to do. And I did try it. I tried herring. I tried Manhattan, you know, fresh Manhattan. We used to get the herring in the spring uh, when we, you could take, you could go get them. And it was just seemed, it was a lot of trouble. You know, I mean, I could tell a story about we, we spent half the day getting herring, you know, river herring in Maine. It was the end of the run in, in uh, Warwick. And we were lugging buckets, my partner and I out in the valley, lugging two five-gallon buckets with two or three live herring each in the, in the bu bucket from Route 1 to River Rock. <laughs> yeah, talk about being one young, where's Earl? Do that, do that now. So we, one day we did that, we dragged them out, we, we rushed out our waiters and our, who was carrying them out. So we get, we get like five or six that are still alive. It's just getting dark. Thank you. Put them on. I'm swimming in the rip, beautiful rip. Nothing, nothing, nothing. About an hour later, the herring died. So Art says, let's chunk them. So I say, I'm going to try a plug. First cast with a windshield level, I get a 38 pounder. So after that, I, <laughs> I said, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I digress. So um, I was basically a live eel fisherman. And I really, you know, that's the only way I, I, I thought you could really, you know, catch a lot of fish and a lot of big fish. So I had some stellar nights with, with both live eels and big eels. So uh, in 2003, Pat and Tim were talking to me uh, one night or one day about this sluggo, this black sluggo. So I'm saying, well, you know, I hadn't heard about it. I thought it was a freshwater bass. Well, really. So uh, they told me, Steve, you got to try this. It's great. We're, we're crushing the fish on it. I said, come on. You know, <laughs> you know, because Pat, Pat and T Tim were consummate surf fishermen. I probably two of the best that I ever met in 50 years of surf fishing. And they, you know, they, but very, very, Pat, very, very excellent, uh, innovative fishermen. And after he told me two or three times and showed me pictures or whatever, I said, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. So I bought a pack of these. This is the way, these are all one. So they come, there's three in a pack, and it comes with a hook even. So they told me, Steve, don't use the hook. They said, it's not a good, not a good thing to do. Uh, because you, you can bend it. A, a fish will, a 30 pound fish will bend that right out. It's kind of made for pike or pickerel or whatever. So what they recommended was this Mustad Limerick 7-0 or 8-0 hook. It's a tube lure hook. 
Hmm. It's got a kink in it. And what it's used for is tubes on umbrella rigs or, or um, um, teasers, you know, codfish teasers or whatever with jigs. And what they did, did, and I didn't bring my pliers, but I have one straightened out. What they did is they straightened it out with two pair of pliers. Hmm. So you see, it's a very long shank hook. And what they did is they put it in the nine inch cargo, and this is, they wrapped a little uh, day crown around, the, around it. So when it went into the sluggo, they glue it and it would bite the plastic or the rubber from the sluggo would bite down on it and stay on the hook. Mm -hmm. So this, pretend that twist tie isn't there. They didn't, the twist ties weren't even invented back then. <laughs> uh, that's something new. But you can see where it's, it, you know, it goes almost half of the way. Mm -hmm. So they said, try it. You know, so I did. I went, I got, I rigged up some black ones and um, I started catching fish immediately. Like the, the first night, I think I had a couple of 30 pound fish. I said, holy shit, you know, this, this thing works. They're not kidding. So I continued to use it. Uh, I didn't buy a, an eel in like a month. It was, <laughs> I don't think I ever did that. Went a month without buying an eel in the season. But using these, if buying them, whatever, and using them and catching almost, you know, every time I went, I, I did really well. But um, as you know, it, conditions change and sometimes the water's rough, sometimes it's blowing, sometimes, you know, you need a longer <coughs> cast. And it's not alone, I mean, it's not really uh, aerodynamic, it doesn't cast well. Uh, so I, I was having problems casting it. Also, I was missing a lot of fish to hit it. The one hook, uh, it just, I was dropping, not dropping fish, just missing hits. Yeah. So it was very frustrating. So what I did is the light went on and, uh, in my brain, and I said, you know, I'm going to try to rig one like an eel, <coughs> like a rig deal, because I had a lot of experience with, with rig deals. So uh, as I progressed using the sluggo, I ended up using two Gamagatsu, 7-0, I think I first started out with a 5-0 in the back and a 7-0 up front, I believe. Uh, but this is, has two 7-0 hooks. But very sharp hooks. Um, I tried a lot of different style hooks, but the octopus seemed to be the best. It was a little curved and a lot of hookups, not a lot of, you know, missed fish. Yeah. And like Tim and Pat said, ah, don't, you know, you really don't have to do that because the fish you're missing with, the one hook, probably small fish. Well, one night using this, I had a 41 pounder on the back hook. So I, you know, I kind of said, okay, I think I'm gonna stick with the, with the two hooks. So with that, um, I was happy with the hook, the hookups, but it's still, it's still planed out of the water in rough water. It wouldn't stay down and the fish seemed to want it underneath the surface at night. They didn't want, like anything on the surface, it's particularly the sluggo, they didn't want it. They, you wouldn't get hits. I had to fish it very slow and twitch it and whatever. So um, one day I'm working at Quaker Lane after I retired from my normal job, regular job. I worked at Quaker Lane for years. And uh, one day I'm in there. This is while the sluggo thing and trials are going on. And a largemouth bass fisherman came in and he bought some spinner baits and whatever. And he bought a package of these. They're Lunker City um, insert weights. So we threw them on a the counter and he, I'm bringing them out. And I said, <laughs> what are these for? <laughs> he goes, get a weight sluggos. I said, do they work? Does it screw up the action? He said, no, no, it made, that makes it better. <laughs> I said, well, here we go. Right? <laughs> so I bought like three packs of them and uh, they were a little different. These are the new ones. They're three thirty seconds of an ounce each one. They have three sizes, I believe, but these are the, the heaviest ones. So what I did is I took the two hook sluggo and I put two on the, either side to be symmetrical and then one in the tail. Just put one right through the tail. And I'm going to rig one up uh, after the, the, the talk, but uh, it, it weighs considerably. I mean, you feel it. You can pass it around. You can, you can feel the difference. Oh, yeah. And it, 
and it casted much better. But more importantly, you could fish it in rough water, deeper water, uh, even current. Like uh, I fish it in an inlet that's not real strong. I would recommend it. This is probably a better deal than an inlet, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But it did work better, much better, in uh, boulder fields where I normally fish. So 10 feet or less water, approximately. So now I got a really good lure that casts great, or better, much better. And it's got two hooks, and I'm hooking almost everything that's hitting it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> so uh, I fished it for a whole season and into another season. And I said to myself, I got I to gotta tell somebody about this. This is like unbelievable. So I wrote an article for On the Water. I had written articles for On the Water. So I asked them, I said, uh, you know, would you like a story about this? So they said, sure. So in 2003, five, I'm sorry, 2003, I wrote this article. It's, it's just about rigging the sluggo and how much, how, how I did, and basically what I told everyone here tonight, you know, I fished eels for years, many years, and then I started fishing this, you know, upon recommendation from my two buddies. And the thing was unbelievable. Well, they they liked the article. They, you know, they said, you know, can you write more about it? Or, you know, we'd like to hear more about it. So I said, okay. So now I'm fishing. I'm not paying attention to writing. So in the winter time, Chris Megan, the, the uh, senior editor for the, on the water, said we'd like to. They had a TV show at the time, right. on the water. TV. <laughs> for, they had it for uh, probably twelve years or so. So they said we'd like to we'd like to have you rig a sluggo on camera, and take us fishing and try to catch a fish with one. I said sure, why not, right? So Mike Laptu got involved. I don't know if you know Mike. Yeah. yeah. The big photographer, right? Yeah, he, 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 he put his his two cents in. So, so it was, we planned it, and it got put off a few times. But anyway, on October twentieth of two thousand and I'm going to say seven or six, uh, we got together and we went to Beaver Tail. I'm not going to spot burn because Beaver Tail is kind of a, big. <laughs> everybody knows about Beaver Tail. So the plan was was for me to rig a sluggo on camera on the rocks. You know, it was yeah. very nice and static. And then try to catch a fish out front, or you know, a beaver tail. So just like clockwork, I rig a slug, go boom, 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 right? Go out on a rock, like second cast, I get a school. Like that. It's beautiful, right? You know, I'm saying thank you, Roy. <laughs> Not a bluefish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I go back in, and, and I guess Chris and while I was fishing, and they were filming me, Chris and. Uh, Mike, and then I'm trying to think of the other guy. He was in charge of the TV. Um, I can't think of his uh, name. Neil anyway, Larson, maybe? No, no, he, no, it wasn't him. He, it was, he, he was there for a while, but he left. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they said, Steve, uh, we'd like you to, to take us to a place after dark. We'd like to film you after dark fishing this thing. Uh, we don't have much surf fishing after dark on, on fo a footage, yeah. so we'd like to do that. So I said, uh, okay. <laughs> I said, oh, what do I do now? Now, it was low tide. It was blowing about 80 miles an hour <laughs> from the southwest. It was one of those, you know, four, really warm fall nights. So now I'm thinking, where am I going to take these guys? We've got two big cameras. We've got, you know, four guys. And now a lot of the places I fish, yeah, <laughs> not off the, you know, they're off the beaten track. Yeah. So I said, okay, let's try this. So we drive down to this spot, we drop all the stuff off, we drive back, park on a, on a spot, and we all walk in right before that. I, I can't believe we made it, but without anybody saying anything, you know, like, get out of here. <laughs> so we go out on the rocks, and I'm saying, please, you know, let there be fish here. It was a shitty tide. It wasn't a great place. Uh, it wasn't, this place isn't really good on low tide, incoming tide, but I said, let's try it. And the wind was really howling, so I didn't want to take them to, say, the Point Tree Lighthouse where the wind's going to be right in your face, you know, because they, they were trying to film. So we go to this spot, and I go out on the rock, and it's, it's myself and Chris Megan fishing. Mike and uh, the other guy, Mr. X, we'll call him. He, they were on the cameras. They were on the cameras. 
So we're on the rocks. Chris is about uh, maybe 20 yards to my left and casting, casting. And uh, I hook up. You know, I got a, I got a, a fish about around 12 pounds. So I said, beautiful, they're here. You know, and they got it. They got it on film. So then about 20 minutes goes by and nothing. I'm saying, oh, boy, here we go. And I hear Chris say, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. So Chris, Chris has got a decent fish on. And he gets it in. And there, Mike and the other guy, there, right on him. Now I'm still fishing 20 yards to the, to the right. And I'm casting, I'm casting. So I'm thinking there might be something even nicer in there. So God and Lady Luck and my <laughs> Irish heritage was with me. Because I hooked a fish. I hooked a, a monster. A really nice fish. And if you want to see it, it's, you can Google it on the water archives. It's the third year, and it's the third edition. And it's um, surf fishing in Rhode Island. And then they used to do a double thing, like surf, they do like surf fishing and trout fishing. Well, that's what this was. Surf, surf fishing and then trout fishing in the Deerfield River. They divided it in half. Well, the fish was 40 pounds that I landed. So we got a 40, and Chris's fish was probably 20 pounds, 25 pounds. It was a good fish. But, you know, all in all, it was fantastic. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. So, uh, uh, so, <laughs> so right after that, I, I think they showed it, they showed the footage, or the, the, the show came on that winter. Well, right after that, you know, sluggo sales boomed. Everybody was buying sluggos. I know I was working at Quaker Lane. We were selling. I mean, it was just unbelievable the amount of, Plackage we were selling with three sluggers. Well, like anything, kind of died, you know. Uh, I, I, now, I don't know, you sell a lot of sluggers? Yeah, we well, yeah. Sluggers, but there's other soft plastics now, too. There, you know? there are. There's, and I think probably right after all of this happened, um, I know. Um, uh, Hoagie. Hoagie. Yeah. Hoagie came out with one, and he had a, he had a double hook one rig. Yeah. That you could buy, and it was very good lure. The hoagie lures were, were good. They were good. They they worked. I tried them, you know, just to, to see. And also her breed from Lanka City, which he developed this. I have no. I just his, modified. His two hook thing was his idea. What he no, developed? he he kind of copied me. He, yeah, yeah. He came out with a two hook production model. You, you can still buy it. Yeah, you know, I've uh, seen them. Yeah, two, it comes two in a package. So it, was, it got popular. It was right. really popular. And the, the weights, you know, the sluggo weights really help. I try to buy some more to rig tonight, but this is all I have left. I have to buy some more. No one has them. Mm. None of the shops have them on, on, online. But anyway, so it was it was quite a night. And, uh, you know, it, it was just, just the start of me realizing how good this war is. And I got to tell you, and I've said it a thousand times, and I'm not, it's not hyperbole. It is the best artificial law I have ever used after dock for a big striped bass. Yeah. If you can fish it. Now, it's, it, it's not good in all situations, okay? It's very good in boulder fields. It's good uh, on sand beaches. But to fish it, like it's a Cape Cod Canal, no, you can't do it. Maybe uh, if the fish are on top, yeah, you can do it. Uh, you know, it's it's not that heavy. It doesn't sink like a stone, you know, like something like this. A lot of guys fish it with, with a, you know, one, two, three ounce jig head, which they tell me works really well. I don't, I don't really use this that much. Um, and the, and the, most people, I guess, fish it with. Um, swim bait hook. Yeah. Now, I got to tell you, I know I've had guys tell me, oh, Steve, now you have to rig it with two hooks. It, you can use a swim bait hook. It works great. You know, they have the nice screw, screw here. You can screw it in. And those. But when you get that, when that's sitting in that bait like that, yeah. okay, and a fish grabs it, you're going to set the hook through the sluggo into the fish's mouth. Nobody's going to tell me that that's a good deal. And I think that anybody who fishes it that way will tell you that they miss fish. You know, this way, very rarely do you miss a fish. And the only time that I've missed fish is sometimes they bowl it up like that, and, and you'll get it back like that. 
just like a live eel. Yeah, it's good. Eels, yeah. eels do that too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's that's why I I, I have a, a, a an order, you know, live eel, rigged eel, and black sluggo, or sluggo, rigged sluggo. And I think, in my mind, you know, I've fished it now 20 years, and, and it's just an amazing lure, and I, I always carry them. I, you know, I still, I fish rigged eels a lot more now, because it's just something different. Um, did you but, have an experiment it, it, one it, year where you, like, was, did you have an experiment one year? I thought we like didn't fish. Oh no, that was yeah. I, I did experiment before all of this. I use I use metal lips all season. Ah. that's all I use. Okay, just nothing else. Yeah, and yeah, it worked out okay. But it, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't really fish metal lips anymore. But the the reason why I think I do well with the two hook version, uh, and I've talked to quite a few guys, is the way I fish the sorgo, and I don't think. A lot of guys fish it the way I do, and I think with the two hooks, um, the fish. Well, for, let me let me start off this way. Okay, I hold the rod, I make a cast, let the lure sink, and when I start reeling, the rod's to the side, so a long rod doesn't lend itself to the way I fish the sluggo. Eight, nine, maybe ten, but nine is perfect. Eight actually is perfect, but you know, it's kind of short for the surf. So say nine feet. But what I do is that fast. Yeah. Okay. Like a fast pencil popper to the side and I'm jigging it. None of this, you know, twitch it. I talk to the guy, you gonna twitch it, and then you gonna let it and twitch it. <laughs> and when that lure is going through the water, it's, it's like this. Yeah. It's got the you know the lead in the in the head. So it has a tendency to, to dive. And it's not, it's going pretty fast, but nothing, nothing is too fast for striped bass to catch up to. Mm. They're, they're animals. They, they can swim faster than anything you're going to reel. But uh, I do fish it fast, that fast. And I've, you know, I've replicated this before and told guys what to do. And, you know, and I, I don't know if they do it or not, but it really, really, really works. I, I would not go surf fishing without a sluggo. You know, and I've tried everything. Um, everything works, you know, everything. Every plug in this store, you can get a sled bass on. But very, very few plugs work most of the time. And the sluggo is in that category. Would you work it the same way without the weight inserted into it? It's hard to do. Okay. It's hard to do. When I, when I started fishing it originally, you know, 20 years ago, I, I, I kind of twitched it, and, and it, would, it, it had a tendency to come up out of the, out of the water, um, which, it, like I said, it's not good at after dark. It seemed the bass wanted something subsurface, uh, at least, you know, my experimentation, experimentation. But with the weights in it, you can, really, you can really get it going. Now, even more uh, experimentation, uh, proved that it can take one more weight. So I put three weights up front and one weight in the tail. So it's even heavier. Mm. And what I've been doing, <laughs> putting the twist ties on them. So I put a twist tie over here and a twist tie over here. So I, you do catch a few more fish that it doesn't get chewed up as yeah, fast. More durable. Yeah. And I did, I always carry, you know, I carry this one just for, Old you know. Sake. <laughs> yeah, because this was the, the, the original, and it does work, and sometimes it, it casts a little bit better, you know. Uh, Rainbow Trout and Black are the best uh, that I found. I tried all the colors, and Rainbow Trout's discontinued, by the way, mm. unfortunately. Uh, and the biggest bass I caught on the Sluggo was on the Rainbow Trout. Mm. So. I have a question. You yes. You put four of those little weights in? I put three up front. Three, um, one, one, and one, right would, behind the hook. Would that be like half an ounce? Okay, three thirty seconds times three is what? So nine nine thirty seconds. I was nine thirty seconds. Yeah. Nine thirty seconds. I was not. Ounce. Was not more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the pl the, the the lure itself weighs. Yeah. I don't know. <coughs> an ounce, maybe. Yeah, a little over. Yeah, a little over an ounce, and the hooks. So all, all in all, you know, the way you got you got. Um, uh, Dacron on it. 
That so, tail weight affect the action a lot? I think it does. Yeah, yeah it really, when it, you get it going, it really... It looks like it. Did you ever see a bunker spoon in the water? Yeah. You know, how it goes kind of like that? Well, it kind of goes like that, but it kind of, it's like, I, what I think, you know, and it's, it's just erratic. congestion. It's just... I think it's the erratic motion. I think it's like Atlantic salmon strikes a fly because yeah. of an innate sense. They're not hungry, but they, they're pissed off at it. Yeah. And they hit it. Yeah. And I think that's what it, it pisses the bass off. And it's, I've caught, I've caught 10 fish over 40 pounds on it since I started fishing it. And I've caught fish up to 44 pounds. Uh, my buddy got a 48 and a half. Tim Coleman got a 47 and a half. Um, Pat, I know, has caught some really big fish. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, I don't know what, every, what everybody has done, but it does work very well. And it has a lot of properties that a live eel has and a rig eel. Whereas you make a cast, you're on right away. Like you, you don't even twitch it. And that reminds you, that reminds me of a live eel. A lot of times fishing live eel, you make a cast. As soon as it hits the water, boom, you know, you, you're on and um, either like scares you. And rig deal, same thing. They'll hit it, you know, just laying in the water. I know they'll do it to a plug, but this is not a plug. This is something better than a plug, I'm telling you. <laughs> I fished metal lips. Daughters, um, you know, there's, there's only a few plugs that I would put in that category that they catch most of the time. And um, this is definitely in that category, you know, top five, top six. Um, if you can fish it. If you can't fish it, I would try it on a jig head. Uh, uh, this, this gentleman that's doing a lot of podcasts, uh, he uses it on a jig head, he told me. And he also uses it with the swim bait hook. And he swears he, he, he doesn't miss many fish. So, you know, maybe he's doing something different. I don't know. Um, here's another swim bait hook. With is he a, fishing nights or is he fishing mornings? Who? The guy that... The, he's, you know. He says he fishes nights. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I've never fished with him. But that's what he says. Oh, excuse me. I use those plain hooks, just a regular hook, mornings. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, what else? What, what, uh, okay, the, I run over the rod, the action. Um, so the, the, the type of water you mentioned, boulder field and sand beaches, but not maybe heavy current spots, right? Because well, it just doesn't have, doesn't settle like... No, it's, it's hard field. to fish in heavy current. Yeah. Um, I had a situation on Cuddy Hunk where the tide was really freaking ripping, you know, and, and I had two guys fishing rig deals next to me. So I'm saying, oh, <laughs> I don't have any big deals. I just had, had these things. And I'm casting, I'm casting, and the fish were there, and I, I didn't get a fish. And they, they did really well. And I think it's because the rig deal was, would go down more in the current, you know, and it was heavier. They, you could fish it uh, correctly. And that's why I place a rig deal in, in right. second over yeah. this. I think this has got everything that a rig deal has, except it's not as versatile. The rig deal is, is much more versatile, I believe, because it, it's weight, you, know, you can fish it, heavy current, you can fish it, you can fish it anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. And it's an eel, it's a dead eel, and it was better than that. Don't go to sleep. <laughs> Don't go to sleep. <laughs> you wanna hear a joke? Why a fish then? Because you eat fish. Sure, there you go. How <laughs> <laughs> you fishing uh, well, you know, when, when I'm when I'm fishing it, it, it comes up. It, it's not deep. It, How deep is the water column? Oh, uh, uh, ten feet or less. Yeah, so they're gonna move for it. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll it'll get a fish to come out from a rock or, I, you know, from Rhode Island. It's mostly boulder fields. You know, I basically fish boulder fields and two inlets, yep. and the inlets, you know, I use a super strike dot or something or, or um, you know, something else. You know, uh, I don't. I'm not nuts about this. I'll be honest with you. I know it works, but I would rather use um, like a an eel skin on this on a jig head or something. You know, but that's that's just not my where I fish a lot. You yeah. know, deep inlets. You know, like I know that this is very good at the canal. 
Yeah. You know, four or five ounce jig head with a slug on it. But that's not the way, you know, the way I fish. Uh, you need several things to rig a sluggo the way I do it. Um, and if, you, if you're doing any kind of rigging, you know, with a jig head or any kind of hook, I mean, there's a, a lot of ways to skin a cat, as my grandfather used to say. Um, but these things will come in handy, uh, again, if you're not doing it the way I do it. But um, what you need is you need a rigging needle. And all this is, this is rigged a lot of sluggos. It's kind of a lucky thing for me now. But it's the bottom of a coat hanger that I cut. And I, I put a little U in one end, and I sharpen the other end for the file. So it's pretty sharp. And you need 50-pound day crown line. You can use 30, you can use 80, but 50 seems to be the best. Um, the easiest way to do, oh yes, and you need sluggo glue. No. <laughs> that's what that's I That's not super glue? <laughs> this is Zappa Gap. Okay. <laughs> I've tried it all. I've tried, my wife thinks I got a blood clot in my leg because of glue, because of rigging sluggos inside. Really. Um, this is the best stuff right here. I buy it online. I buy the big, this is the family size. It's, it's good. It, it, it's so good. The other day, well, two weeks ago, I'm rigging a sluggo, and my, my fingers stuck together. I didn't do it fast enough because I haven't rigged one in you know, a couple of months. Do you think I can get my fingers apart? And my wife didn't have any acid. Uh, you know, yeah, polish whatever. I pulled it with a pair of pliers. I pulled my thumb. Oh my took a chunk out of my oh, wow. <laughs> So I put some tape on it. And I go upstairs and my wife goes, well, what'd you do now? You know, <laughs> she knows. But anyway, so uh, if you're going to rig sluggos or really any soft plastic, this is Zappa Gap. It's, it's medium CA. It really soaks in. Oh, red fins too. If you're waiting red fins, um, it's a great way to, to, to get it into all the nooks and crannies of the plastic red fin or bombers or whatever you uh, way it is. It's good stuff. Just don't get it on your hands. If you do, wipe it off quick. Okay, here we go. You get a length of 50 pound Daycron. I've been rigging one in a couple of months. So. Uh, you just a length of day, uh, day crown like that. Just double knot this right here, like so. And any of you have rigged, I mean, you probably have singing to the choir here. I'm sure some of you have rigged sluggos. But anyway, you get a 7 0 Damagatsu hook, very strong hook. Commercial ride reelers. Um, who make their money out of selling striped bass. And when they yo-yo, they use a 5 or a 6 so Gamagatsu. So that's another reason why I kind of gravitated towards it, because they're good hooks. Those guys, they know what they're doing. They don't like to use crappy stuff. All right, what I do is I tie an improved clinch knot, double. You know, again, you can use whatever your favorite knot is. My dad taught me this a hundred years ago. <laughs> and it's never let me down. Let's trim it off. You know, after a while, you, you get good at this. You can rig quite a few of them. It's a lot faster than rigging a live eel, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. a real, I mean, a dead eel. All right, just stick it right there. Right in there, and you just go, you try to go through the middle. It's not that important, but sometimes you go out the side, just pull it back in and go out to the, to the end, like that. You can put dishwash, a little dishwash soap on it, so it'll go through easier, but a little spit too works. And you just hook did, did you put the rigging needle in the last little um, thin pot? I can't tell from here. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, yeah. where to go in? Yeah. I always go in the same spot. It's right, it's like. Uh, right in this one? Just behind yeah, that. Yeah, just behind that. Oh, just behind, behind it? Right, right. 
that's where the anus would be. If yeah, almost like equidistant, like this gap. Yeah. It's almost like another yeah. gap down. Yeah. All right, all right. Just I just see guys marker. putting in a tail. You know, that's I not necessary. Back, yeah, there you go. All right, and you just pull it. You just hook the, the double day crown on that little U-hook, and you just pull it through. You know, you do it slow because you don't want to really rip the slug up too bad. And you just go right through like so. And you go. <laughs> As far as than I expected. Okay, the now, there's another, <laughs> there's another secret. There's another secret, and that's why you have to buy a lot of glue. I glue the shit out of the hooks. Like that's when, dead at the turf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get it in there like that. Now, the sluggo doesn't have to be straight. You know, it's, it's se semi straight yeah. like that, okay? Now putting the putting the head hook in is it's a little dicey, but what I'll do is you just you measure it out like so. So you want the eye exposed. And then you go in to the side of the day crown. And you go in like that and you come out right about there. Now, sometimes you hook the day crown, don't get nervous, just back it out, try it again. And you gotta connect the back hook with the head hook, obviously, because if you get a Nice fish on the back hook, you don't want to lose it. So what I do is I just, if any of you tie flies, just half inch. You do one, and that's the first one, tighten it up. You do another one. And so, like that. And you do about, well, I guess about Six or seven of them. I mean, you can go up right up the short hook shank if you want, but that's enough to connect them because you're going to glue this too. You're going to knot it and you're going to glue it, so it's pretty strong, you know. It'll withstand the weight of a big fish. Okay, that's going to look like that. Okay, so you got got to have some hanging off. Now, <clears throat> what I do is I just make a knot like so. An overhand knot, and you just work it down like that, and you just pull two bo two ends. Now this day crown, there's something. It's not real good day crown. I I can't get the green spot anymore. This doesn't want to slide down. The green spot is is um, coated, I think. So I mean, I have problems with it sometimes. What what generally happens is is that knot goes right down on the on the half inches. That's not going to do it. Okay, well we'll do it this way. Okay. <clears throat> no, I I don't know why the person that I buy this from doesn't buy the green spot anymore. The good stuff. All right, just make a knot in so that way it's not gonna it's not gonna unravel anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now's the time you got to glue it. And at one time, I had Sluggo glue on everything I owned. <laughs> My question is, how do you have such a big bottle that doesn't goop up and the cap doesn't fuse on? So, I, for fly tying, I have the little ones, and I can't get through a full bottle without it getting gooped. Store upside down. Secret. Keep sticking something through it. Nope. What you do after you use it, well, let me do it, and I'll show you what I do. Okay, you glue it like that. All right, you glue it, and then you push it in with your, your heel of your hand. And that's it. And that's okay if that's hanging there. It doesn't matter. All right, wipe off. Yeah, quick, quick. Wipe off. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> I did. No, I did. It's not on my fingers. No, I must say, thank you. Okay, now, <laughs> now, here you go. After you do that, you go in. They sell an applicator that you can put on top of this, but this works better best. You glue it there, and you put this in the back. The hole is pretty good size, and you just glue it, glue it, glue it like that. Now, you let it dry, like so. Now, to keep this glue from, you know, gump, gump, gumping up, what you got to do is just blow on it, make the hole. That's a 
case. It doesn't do it. You get something pointed like a hook, and you just go right through. There you go. See the hole in there? Yeah. Okay, then you put, you wipe it clean, then you put the applicator on, put the top on, then you put it in a Ziploc bag. Okay. Believe me, I've gone through yeah, it. Yeah, no. Going I, down yeah. Rich yeah. and you go like this, and it's like a rock. Yep, for sure. Somebody told me you can put it in the freezer, too. Okay. Which, uh, let me try. But what I do is I seal it. Very, very judicious about this because you have to be. Uh, that's how it's a it's bold expensive move going, stuff. Going, yeah, going with the big bottle because. <laughs> and, and it will never, it never go. This All is right. this is from last year. Last, wow, good I bought this last, last spring. I bought two bottles. I'm impressed. Okay. Well, you do a thousand of these things. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. That should be pretty dry here. <clears throat> now, you get your slug away. I didn't leave the tablecloth here, did I? Character. Stuck right there. <laughs> Put one on the side like that. You want this along the side of the hook? Yeah, just parallel to the hook. And then one, one, oh, I'm going to do three, okay. Then this one goes in the bottom, like the ballast. So they're all next to each other. Kind of, yeah. Right, no. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And I don't think it, like, it doesn't come through the water like this, you know. I mean, you could probably put them on the top. I don't think it would matter. And then the back one is a little tricky. You just <coughs> stick it right in the, right in the tail. And the rubber will just go right over it. It'll close up the hole. And you can reuse the weights. You know, if a fish chews it up, and they will, you can reuse the weights, you can reuse the back hook. The front hook's got a lot of the Dacron on it, and um, you need a Dremel tool to get it off. So if you really want to do that, you can. Uh, somebody pick a number from 1 to 10. 7. Three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just let it dry a little bit. Put on a plate. Yeah, put on that plate. Let it dry. Catch a big fish on that, okay? You don't, you don't <laughs> the weights. Yeah. Don't no, the no, you don't glue the weights because yeah, the weights are you can use them. You just rip them out yeah. and, and use them again. Mm -hmm. Now I've tried different weighting. I've tried putting you know five, six weights in it, and it just kind of deadens it and it kind of acts like like this one. Would. This one, when it comes through the water, it kind of goes like this. Yeah, like a you know, bucktail. Or if you reel it straight, it you know has like a little wiggle to it. It's nowhere near the action of this the way I fish it, you know. And I think it, you know, makes it, it makes a difference. Like if you use this in a bowl of field, I don't think you do as well as if you use this. The, that, the one you, the way you describe the one you rig is it's erratic. Very right? erratic, yes. Very. I mean, I, well, before I make a cast, I test everything I use. No matter what it is, I go out and I field test everything. But when I'm fishing, you know, I'll throw in the water next to me if I'm on a rock and I'll, I'll, I'll just see how it looks. And, you know, I've only had, I think, like one that, I don't know, it just didn't have, I don't know, they're not, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty um, forgiving. forgiving, yeah. Um, I, I, I had a few that were like hollow inside, hmm. and they worked, but they didn't. They swam a little different, so I was kind of, you know, surprised when I, you know, put them next to me and tested them. But you always test, see see how they they look, and you'll see, you'll see the action, the crazy action. I, I would suppose that you would use a, like a tactical anglers for obvious reasons, switching them out, but yeah, giving it a little more motion. Yeah, I use I use a clip. You know, a tiny direct. Well, that's what I mean. Direct yeah. also, I think, would hinder maybe yeah, a little you, bit. Unless much. you use the, the loop knot yeah. that yeah. all these fly guys use. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, I don't use tactical angles. Well, any well. Crap, I, use a, I use the old... Um, breakaway. Um, well, I like breakaway. Years ago, they made really good ones. But I use uh, the um, Roscoe snap. You know, the co coastline snap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any questions? Any more questions? That's all I have for you guys. Thank you. Any questions? Any